Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna take a look at this thing right here, which is absolutely going to revolutionize a lot of people's lives. This is perhaps the cheapest and most interesting eight port two and a half gig ethernet switch on the market by a long shot. And the reason for that is this thing's only about $121, but it's not just a two and a half gig ethernet switch. It also supports PoE, PoE plus and more. And if you're not up to date on your two and a half gig ethernet switch pricing, this is basically the same price as the TP-Link eight port two and a half gig switch that I had to order also off of AliExpress. And that one, the TP-Link one didn't have PoE. So this one actually has PoE and not only does it have PoE, it actually has more PoE power budget than the one gigabit Netgear switches that are at this price. And that is exactly why in that TP-Link video that we did a little bit ago, I said that this, that the eight port version I was not gonna recommend because I thought there was something better. And this is actually what I think is better. There are definitely some caveats. I got this off of AliExpress, so it is not a perfect switch. And there are gonna be people that are gonna see these caveats and say, yep, I'm out, can't do it. But I think a lot of people are gonna say, uh, maybe this one is worth getting and just trying out and seeing how it works. And I think that, you know, this is not a super expensive product. So I think that a lot of folks are gonna like this. And so let's get to our review. Now, the product itself is called the Hazivo or Hazivo. I don't know. You tell me how you think you would say that. I have absolutely no idea. I've never heard of this vendor before buying this. And it's the Hazivo, I guess, S1100P8GT. And as I mentioned before, this switch did come from AliExpress. I had to order it. It took a little while. It was actually a little faster to get here than the TP-Link switches are about the same. So, so it was not like uh, super fast, like getting something on Amazon. You are not gonna go find this on Amazon. I couldn't find it. I've been looking for it for the last, like, I don't know, two months or something like that. And so I would just say that, you know, this is definitely, there's some reasons that this is, uh, you know, only on AliExpress. But on AliExpress, you can find this switch for the low price of $121. Now, that is okay, but I should also mention the fact that you are probably gonna spend something like $28 to $30 or so getting reasonable speeds shipping because uh, shipping right now is just absolutely horrid from China. Uh, but at the same time, you are gonna spend that extra bit. So realistically, I'm gonna call this $121 switch, but I do wanna just say that shipping will be added depending on where you live in the world. But let's just talk really quickly about a couple of comparable items, right? So those TP-Link switches that we saw, I think were like, like just around the same price on AliExpress for the A-Port model. You also have things like, I looked at the cheapest switch that you could find on Walmart, which uh, looks super ugly. Uh, I almost kind of want to buy it just to review it because um, because it is super ugly. Let's just let's just call it what it is. But that thing is over $170. When I went and I looked at just kind of what the Netgear equivalent would be of something like this in the price range for $119. Now I know somebody's going to say cheaper, whatever, but $119, $121. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, the Netgear switch that is most comparable to this is an eight port, one gigabit ethernet model. And the PoE budget on the thing is only 83 watts. This thing has a higher PoE budget. And so that's why I would say, um, you know, in terms of pricing, this is definitely pretty darn good. Now, some things that you're not gonna get with this, uh, lifetime warranty, like you would get with Netgear if you have it, if they ever do break, if you send it in, um, well, you know, Netgear will actually get, usually get you a replacement. This, um, we actually even had a problem with this one and I'll show you that in a little bit, but it may have been us causing it. Still, you know, you're just not gonna get, you're not gonna get that same level of service you would get from a big brand. And uh, also things, uh, let's, just, let's just do the easy one. So you're gonna look at the top of this, you're gonna look at the bottom, all the sides, and something that you're not gonna see, we'll show you this, this label, but what you're not gonna see on this is any markings. Like you don't see FCC markings, CE markings. You don't see just any kind of certifications out there. I, this is, there's no UL marking. There's absolutely nothing on this device. So if you do have a environment where that is gonna matter, I would say um, this is probably not the switch for you, but if you're just, uh, if you're willing to go take a risk and just, just you know, YOLO, why not? This is actually pretty interesting. Let's just talk about this label. The fun things on there as the Hasvo label are the fact that you see that we can actually have one port and go up to 90 watts in terms of PoE, that would be PoE++. The second thing that you'll see is that if you go beyond that, you're basically talking about a 30 watt budget, which pretty much puts you in the PoE plus range. Still, this is a two and a half gig ethernet PoE plus switch. That is pretty darn good. 
good. Now, you will also notice that this does not say GBPS because that would be gigabits per second. Instead, what you see is GDPS. And I don't know what GDs are. So if you know in the comments, let me know. Maybe they're like gosh darns per second. Like how many gosh darns per second can you do? I don't know, but this says GDPS. And that just kind of tells you a little bit about, you know, where these things are targeted in the market. It's not necessarily at the high end because you see things like those typos on these labels. Then again, if you saw our American Mega Trans video with the Dell EMC high-end 125 gig switches, um, you might you might say this is not too far off, so that's fair. Okay, but now that we've done that, let's get to the hardware and just kind of see what you actually get. So in the front of the switch, what you'll see is that we get a total of eight two and a half gig ethernet ports. Now there are no uplink ports. So you don't get like a 10 gig uplink port or anything like that, which means that you're probably gonna use one of these uplink ports to the rest of your infrastructure, just my guess. And so if that's the case, um, well, you know, th then, then you're definitely gonna wanna have another two and a half gig ethernet switch or something, but you're also not gonna be able to get the full bandwidth of the switch and all the ports doing over, you know, like one uplink, right? Cause you have, eight ports and they're all two and a half gig ethernet. So you don't have a higher speed port. On the other hand, these little eight port switches are super common. So I don't necessarily have a problem with that because there are a lot of devices that frankly just will not be competing and you're not gonna run, a lot of most applications will say are not gonna run at 100% all the time, right? So I don't actually think that that's too bad. Now these two and a half gig ethernet ports, they also run at one gigabit per second. They run at 100 megabits per second. I think they also run at 10 megabits per second, but we didn't actually get to try that. Um, but that's just kind of what I think you can do. It actually says on port one that you could do 10 megabits, but we just we just don't run network sets slow anymore. So now there is a version of the switch which costs a little bit less. It's you know a couple dollars less, but it is the non-PoE version. And one of the big ways that you can tell between the non-PoE version and the PoE version is that you're gonna see on the bottom here you have this blue strip, and on this blue strip you have these little LED lights that light up if the port is providing PoE power. Now I will note that if you don't want PoE and you just say I just don't want PoE, Patrick. I just want a normal switch. The version of that is, a, I think, like $95. But because you have the extra shipping, frankly, then you're basically in the same range as those TP-Link switches that we reviewed previously. And you may want to go with TP-Link because you've probably heard of TP-Link and you have never heard of Hazivo, because uh, I don't even know how to say that. Still, going from no PoE to PoE is only $26. And frankly, I think that that is the reason that I would only recommend the PoE version, which we have here, because, I mean, like, like PoE switches always have a pretty strong premium, especially PoE Plus switches and stuff like that, have strong premiums over the non-PoE versions. And so I totally think that for this price, I get it. Continuing our hardware overview, both of the sides are just vented, so there's really nothing going on there. And then the rear of the switch, there are two things. Basically, you have your DC input and then you have a grounding point. Now, I know a lot of folks would look at the switch and say, you know, I'd really prefer if the power supply input was on the front with everything else, but that's just the way that these guys are doing it. And at this price range, that's it. Something else I want to note is that sometimes when I was looking at listings for this, both in English and also in Chinese, um, one of the things that you'll see is that sometimes they talk about having mounting uh, points on the bottom of this. So you could like mount it to something using screws and uh, this this unit does not have those. So there's no rack mount provision. Um, there's really no, you know, being able to to just go and, and, and put this on screws or anything like that. So I, I just wanted to note that this is probably a desktop unit, but even as a desktop unit, we don't get little rubber feet. So, or at least they didn't come with this one. So, um, you're probably gonna have to go get rubber feet or maybe, you know, just some Velcro so you can go Velcro this to somewhere or whatever it is, but you're probably gonna need to go figure out a mounting solution because I just think that this will, this is a metal chassis, it will scratch a, you know, table or something like that. So I would just say, definitely think about spending another dollar or two or whatever it ends up being to just go and have some better way to mount this on wherever you're gonna put it. Okay, so looking in the switch, I'm just gonna kind of give you the high level of what you're looking at here. On the top is usually, that's usually the PoE boards. That's what's basically providing the PoE power into the ports. And then you have your base board, which that's the base switch board. So remember that there's a version of this without PoE. I would expect that you would not see, we don't have that one, but I would expect that you would not see the PoE board on that. And instead you just have the base PCB. Now. On that base PCB, what you'll notice is that there's a heatsink, and under that heatsink is a Realtek switch chip. That is the Realtek RTL 8371. And you might say, um, well, I've heard of Realtek, 
but what about their Switch chips? Like, is that a good one or whatever? And the answer to that, by the way, is that the 8371 is super widely used, especially in these eight port, two and a half gig ethernet switches. I mean, like QNAP uses them. I looked it up, I looked it up and just a bunch of different companies actually use this exact same chip. So it kind of seems like if you are gonna do a two and a half gig ethernet eight port switch these days, that's probably the one that you're gonna see in a lot of the low cost devices. So, and I think it's also the same one that we saw in the TP-Link switch. So, you know, there are definitely other vendors, a lot of other vendors that use it. You can look up the RT. 8371 and go find what those vendors are but this is an unmanaged switch and what that practically means is that we don't have like the management processor we don't have a web interface to go do you know things in a GUI we don't have a CLI to go do stuff you have absolutely none of that this is an unmanaged switch so it's basically just plug devices in and they start talking to each other if you want a managed switch, cool, but this is not the switch for you. And although we have extremely fancy switches at STH, both in the labs, even in the studio, everywhere, this is something that I still will use because it is nice to just have something that you can just power on and just plug stuff into, have things light up on a network. I mean, these things are still super useful and they've, you know, unmanaged switches are a thing, guys. I know there are people that are like super network people that are gonna be like, oh, everything has to be managed. But at the end of the day, you know, the unmanaged switch segment is still huge and people still use these things. And I totally get why, because they're super easy. So feel free to go blast me in the comments for that. But I think that people still use unmanaged switches because they're easy. Now you may see that big switch chip and think to yourself, hey, um, is that really a switch? Because I see all these other little Realtek chips on there. Like what the heck are those? Those are the Realtek 8221Bs. And what those are, if you don't know, is those are basically FIs for the, you know, the NIC ports. And so I guess that those, those have to be used with the Realtek NIC chip, the 8371, to make this switch work. So we're just gonna say that that's what that is. Um, it's their two and a half gig generation. And um, well, that's what we see here. Overall, this is still an eight port unmanaged switch. So there's really not that much going on. It's definitely a lot less complex than the high end 100 gig, 400 gig switches that we've looked at previously. But at the same time, you know, it's cheap. So that's cool. Now, in terms of power consumption and noise, um, there is the PoE power budget. And in a PoE switch, any PoE switch, the vast majority of power that's gonna be used is most likely going to be used by the devices that it's connected to. That's life. But this thing does have power consumption just for the switch itself. Now, if you have the switch and you just plug it in, you're gonna get about six and a half watts. If you then go and plug a two and a half gig connection in, you're going to see that your power consumption is going to be somewhere around uh, maybe eight, 8.1 watts or so. And so I would use Rough, roughly, you know, maybe about a watt and a half per device that you would go and maybe it's like 1.7 watts or something, but about one to one, one and a half to 1.7 watts per device that you're gonna plug in. That's kind of what I would expect in terms of power consumption, but it might vary based on devices. If you're using one gig, if you're using 100 meg. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different combinations you could have, but that's just some general guidelines in terms of power consumption. Of course, with noise, you don't have any because this is a fanless switch. And we did not hear a lot of coil whine or any coil wine really with this. So um, frankly, that was that was great. There was no like buzzing or anything like that that we heard in our unit. Again, sample size of one, but still pretty good. So what I wanna do is let's just fire this thing up. So I just threw a whole bunch of different things on the table. And the first thing I wanna talk about though is really the power supply because in a PoE switch, the power supply is kind of important. This unit is actually the PW5222. And this unit actually does have some regulatory markings and stuff like that. I didn't check databases, but you know, this, they do have the regulatory markings. And this is actually kind of an interesting interesting power supply because it's a 52 volt power supply, but it's two and a half amps. And so one of the really cool things we did was we actually got this switch to go put out like, I think like 90 something watts of power. Cause I just wanted to go see if it would beat the 83 watts that the Netgear is specified for in the one gig Netgear generation. I just wanted to see like if this one would actually beat it. And it turns out it did no problem. Um, and actually just cause I was using IP cameras, we just didn't have enough load to go over that. But still like this thing actually held up pretty darn well. It does get a little warm. The switch will get a little bit warm, but but um, definitely not too hot to use. So I was actually kind of impressed by that. Okay, so what you're looking at here is basically I set up a whole bunch of different things. Now, of course I did IP cameras, but IP cameras frankly don't use that much power. And so uh, that, that you know definitely powered on no problem. And then I said, well, let's get a little bit more ambitious than just doing an IP camera. So in addition to the IP camera, I also said, well, let's go and test and see and make sure that these things are using PoE plus and they have PoE. So what we did was we set up our little PoE testers. And I don't know why more people don't use these, by the way. These are just a little trend net 
PoE testers, and frankly, it's kind of cool because they can show you one all the specs, and they can you know emulate a device and show you the specs of the port. And the other thing that they can do is they can show you the inline power consumption. So what is the power being drawn over the lines in terms of PoE? So you can see the power of a PoE device. So we set that up in target mode instead of inline mode, so we could actually go and see what that looks like. We also set up a little tiny two and a half gig firewall box, which is the Intel Atom or Intel uh, N6005 based system. And so this is actually really cool. This little system right here, you've seen a video on, it has four two and a half gig ethernet ports and we are using PoE to power this device. And we also have the two and a half gig switch, which is absolutely awesome. Now we are using a PoE splitter there and this thing is a PoE made in China splitter. Um, literally that's, that's what it says. Uh, but that's basically what we're using and we are able to power this device no problem. Hopefully on the B-roll you'll be able to see that we can get into the you know same basically voltage between the switch as well as the device. Now, I definitely don't recommend long-term running the N6005 because I think that uses a little bit more power. But if you have the older ones, like when we did the J4125 versions of these little boxes, I think that those 100%, we run those on PoE all the time and they're absolutely great on PoE. We'll link the, the videos for all these things in the description so you can definitely go check those out. But you can see we have a little TrendNet box running and we're actually showing that this thing is pulling power and that's kind of cool. And then next to that, we have the Netgear Wax 630, which is a Wi-Fi 6, but it also, it's not just an AP, a Wi-Fi AP, but it also has a lot of radios. So it uses a ton of power. It actually needs, you know, higher power uh, PoE, which is very important on this thing. And the other thing is it has a two and a half gig uplink. So this is a good use case for that and had absolutely no problem, you know, powering all this stuff all at the same time. So I'm super excited just the fact that this thing actually worked. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we have our little PoE splitter here. We have the Haviso switch here. And then we have one of these little nodes that have the four two and a half gig ethernet ports. This is the N6005 one. You're gonna see a link to all of these things in the description so you can go find them. We have videos on all this stuff. Um, so I just kinda, just kinda wanna show you guys. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to do the moment of truth and we're going to plug this entire thing in. And by the way, this device, when we had it on AC power, could use over 30 watts. So it's not a low power device by any means. It's running Proxmox. You just heard it beep. You see the little light here. This thing just turned on and is booting into to Proxmox right now. And so this is actually a little hypervisor system. It has a four core processor. I mean, it has a 16 gigabytes of memory, has like a half terabyte SSD, and it's all running on PoE on a super inexpensive switch. Of course, it is using the PoE made in China splitter, but still that's what it is. And as you'll note, we can actually see on our TrendNet unit that this thing is pulling power. We can see voltages, all that kind of stuff, all on the little TrendNet unit. So we have the ability to go and look at what's going on. The other thing you'll notice is that that was super quiet because both the little hypervisor node as well as the switch are both fanless. So that's really cool because this thing is basically silent just like you would expect because it doesn't have any fan or anything like that. But still, if you want something that's fanless and inexpensive, this is pretty cool. Now, let's get to some of the things that are maybe, uh, maybe, maybe not the best. Now, there are definitely some things that are not good with this. And let's start with documentation. Um, in terms of documentation, you might think because there's a, you know, management, uh, there's no management interface because it's an unmanaged switch. You might think like, hey, I don't really, I don't really care about documentation. But let me give you an example of why you might need documentation. If you remember the label that had the gosh darns per second, well, that's basically the, the best guide that we had in terms of what kind of PoE you got. It seems like we could get one port of PoE++, but it also seems like all the other ones were like, they're, they're all PoE plus. I, I don't really know. And the other thing is it doesn't actually have a exact spec in terms of what the maximum power consumption is. I just couldn't find that frankly. And so even those like little things like how much power you need to use or how much power can you use and all that kind of stuff. I, I don't necessarily have a great answer for you uh, just because there's no documentation. We had, that's why we had to go bring out a couple of these little PoE testers that we could use just because uh, I just kind of wanted to make sure that if I'm telling you that it supports PoE plus it actually does. And the fact is I wanted to also see if we could do a little bit higher power devices and we could, but um, you know, overall your power budget is not huge. It's not unlimited because you have a 52 two volt, two and a half amp power supply. The other thing is just frankly, I don't know what you would do if one of these things broke. I just, I, I don't know, right? That's, that's just something I can't tell you. Uh, you don't have a easy way to go. You may, you may be able to go contact the seller on AliExpress, but you don't necessarily have someone in the US that you can call and say like, hey, I got a warranty, you know, can you, can you replace this? And why that matters is that what you will note in some of our B-roll is that one of the ports actually, um, you know, it, it didn't light up. The activity lights didn't light up. Now, I don't know if this is because the, 
lights were defective in the first place because the first thing that we did was we actually took photos of these and somebody that was new to STH was taking photos at the time. They're no longer with uh, STH. So I uh, didn't really have the opportunity to say like, hey, did you, uh, did you happen to nick one of those uh, one of those ports? But at the same time, um, you know, it could have been us that broke it. So we do have more of these units inbound. We will update because we can't really, you know, update this video. We will update the STH main site article as those come in because we ordered two more units just to go see if they would work or not. But also because this isn't a super well-known brand that I think you know, a lot of folks are aware of, you know, I, I definitely think that there could be manufacturing variability and maybe that's the reason that our little activity lights don't work. I don't know the answer to that. And the other thing I just want to be very clear is that the activity lights worked on all the other ports, just not port one. So between the documentation, manufacturing variability, and the fact that you don't really have uh, a warranty that's super easy to use, I, I would just say that that would be the reasons that you wouldn't necessarily want to buy this one. But overall though, I do think that it is a pretty darn good value. So going back a couple weeks, you might remember that we did this TP-Link switch and we'll link this video in the description, but this was an okay switch, but I still said, you know, this is not one I would go and recommend. And the reason for that is because the Havasu unit we already had, and I already knew that this thing was absolutely awesome. And so the thing I would just say is that you could go get this one, which is with shipping, fair enough, it's like 20, 20 ish dollars less. But, uh, you know, getting PoE is always just nice. And this thing doesn't just have a little PoE budget, it has a pretty substantial PoE plus budget. So, frankly, I think that for me, I love this little switch. Now, the fact that I love this switch does not necessarily mean that everybody's gonna go buy it because uh, frankly, you don't have like regulatory markings or all kinds of things that you would expect and hope for. We went over those, but I do think that overall, I think that these things are super useful. And just for like a little lab environment, I'm, I'm totally happy using these little things. And we'll also link Rohit's main site review of the switch. So that way you can see that as well. And hey guys, if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, Thanks for watching, have an awesome day.